Good morning, pumpkin. Wait, where are you going? As soon as I hit record, you're gonna run away? Don't put your pumpkin on camera, pumpkin. So sweet, such a good little pumpkin. Hey, what's up, garden friends? <laughs> what? Okay. Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great. It's early. I'm talking quietly. Having some quality time with my kitty. Where are you going? I finally got my car back. Now I just need to take some stuff out of it, make some room, and then I'm gonna go treat myself to a palm tree. I got one of these vault doohickeys to put bird seed in because rodents been trying to keep the bird feeders full and the, the squirrels and the chipmunks and I think maybe mice have been getting into the bag so this will help secure those things. I used to use like those metal popcorn tins but I don't have any of those so this will have to do what this this isn't necessary we're not doing a tour of what's in my trunk right now that would take a long time I mean it's mostly just towels and trash bags and plastic for buying plants but you know oh text message I was debating whether or not I need to take the seat out I think I'm going to leave it just because it's kind of hard to take out I'm gonna have to have someone else load this thing up for me I'm not gonna be able to do it myself is there like a point in having all the things in the back of the car to keep dirt from getting on the carpet when they've become covered in dirt and they're bundled up into a pile? I don't really think so. I need to do something about that. But hey, you know, I've only driven this thing one time in like five months, so doing my best here. No plans this week at all. In fact, it's not even this week yet. I'm starting this vlog like 11 days in the past, which I don't usually do, so. That might make things more weird and all over the place. I don't know. We'll find out. But I wanted to get out to the nursery and get that palm tree while they still have it. They might not even have it. I could call them. But I need to grab some other things anyways. Mostly just some fertilizer. I might bring you along with me. I don't know if I'll film while I'm there or not. I might just run in and out. You've been there. It's Greenscape. My favorite nursery. If there's anything to show, I will show it. I should really actually get going because it's pretty gloomy out and who knows how long the weather is going to hold off. Yet here I am still talking. Okay, all right, okay, that's enough. That was loud. Look how dirty. It's so dirty. Really glad I sprung for that like $25 spa treatment for the car. It, that was clearly pointless. You guys want to see the hydrangea trees? Yeah, I mean, they're not looking great at this point, but yeah, they're pretty much fizzled out. They looked really good like two weeks ago. Okay, I'm clipping y'all up into the things. I mean, I'll be able to hear me as well, but safety. Can you get the POV of what it's like driving? It feels really echoey in here right now. Is that coming through on the mic? I guess I'll find out when I'm editing the video. I switched over to phone mode. I don't take my big chunky camera out with me when I'm vlogging. It's, it's too much, the thing's huge kind of heavy and just bulky and awkward so uh, there's going to be a difference in video quality because I'm using my phone for when I'm vlogging outside the house and uh, I there, it's a different frame rate basically the phone is 30 frames per second my big camera I do 60 frames so uh, it just this uh, it's not going to look as good but hey you know what can you do right I mean I was looking into getting a vlog camera the Sony ZV one and um, when I went to the camera store I ended up buying a new lens instead because they didn't have the ZV-1 and after reading some more reviews from like YouTubers who've been using it because that particular camera is like made for YouTubers it's small it has a flip front it's like almost perfect however it doesn't have a multi-directional microphone just kind of what I mean I think anybody expects it's new technology right like okay that's great you came out with the new camera state-of-the-art awesome I'll wait for the next one because y'all are gonna have to work out the bugs probably so I'm just sticking with my phone for when I vlog outside the house it's not like I leave the house that often anymore anyways I mean none of us really do I'm only like not even once a week you know maybe every other week but I, that's a little bit confounded because you know the whole entire cancer and surgeries and all those things but when you factor in the pandemic it's like yeah I'm trying to stay at home as much as I can but it turns out that I had mentioned with the car one of the problems is there's something wrong with the muffler they welded something onto it and that kind of helped a little bit it's just it's gotten very loud and uh, they said that I don't, I don't know the technical terms for it but whatever it was they claimed to have fixed it still feels really loud to me but the main problem was the I thought it was a pump, then they said it was a secondary air intake, whatever the case, there was water in it, which shouldn't happen, especially in an SUV, especially in an SUV whose frame is the same as a Toyota Tundra, 
Like, I mean, the, the, the mechanics of the car is the same as the truck. So how's water damage gonna, anyways, whatever. Could rant about that for a long time. Shouldn't have happened, but it did. They replaced it and they also found like a bunch of seeds and like acorns and things packed in to some pipes. So the chipmunks have apparently been using my car to stash their food. I'm sure that's one of those things that I could Google and probably find like a hundred different solutions, like remedies, you know, I bet I could use like peppermint oil and all kinds of things to help deter them. I'll, I'll look into that. I haven't even attempted to look into it. I just got the car back. So that's something I need to figure out. Okay, well that's enough of that. Maybe we'll pick back up at the nursery or maybe I'll be somewhere else. I don't know. I don't really have a plan other than hopefully to get that palm tree and a few other things I need for the yard. I have been looking for kumquats for like two years, but wouldn't you know, they're all variegated and for the first time ever, not the first time ever, I don't usually care that much for the variegated plants, but I don't, I don't, I don't like the variegated ones. I want the dark green pretty foliage that the kumquats will stand out on the plant and look nice. These are cute. But why they gotta? Why do we, we don't have to variegate everything? Come on, stop it! I'm also really excited. They have some sea berries, which are great shrubs to have around, especially if you like the birds. Here's the tag for it: Hippophae rhamnoides. These get like all these little orange berries all over them in the about fall time. They're high in vitamin C. You can eat them. Wildlife likes them, and they have a really nice wispy, beachy appearance. The problem is these. I think these have seen better days, so I'm not going to get one right now, but it's a neat plant. And, um, you know, in a few weeks, I'm sure I'll be back and we'll see how they look then. Because I think that, you know, the temperatures here have just been up and down and up and down and there's asphalt here and everything. I think, you know, they just need maybe just a little bit of TLC. But it, they're tough plants. They're hardly all the way to zone four, so it's not like I think that they would just die or anything like that. No, they should be totally fine. And they have a lot of hardy figs, which is awesome. I've wanted to plant some brown turkey figs. I don't think this is the year for it. I prefer to get them in the ground much earlier in the season, because it's basically the end of the season. Because there's some that are hardy to zone six. They'll grow more like a bush than a tree, but you still get figs off of them. Palm tree, riding shotgun, it's the way it should be. You know, all those towels, why the hell didn't I put one? I'm rusty, y'all, I haven't been out doing this enough. This is what happens when you go five or six months without putting 15 foot tall palm trees in your car. Just, I'm off my game. This is probably really shaky because my hand's kind of shaky. Look at it though, isn't it pretty? I mean, I guess this isn't the best, we'll just look at it when I get home. Uh, not, no, oh, it's humidity. Come on now, let's see if we can get that off the lens. Uh, that's a little better. It's just gonna fog back up. I got my palm tree. Now I just have to figure out how am I gonna get this out of the car. By the time the lens defogs, I will have figured it out. In the past, when I've had the pot right here, I've just pulled the door open and just slid them and pulled them out. But I don't really think that's going to work with this one. I think she's too big for that. Probably not going to work. There'll be a lot of bending and stuff there. I think really the only way to do this is to take it back out the way I put it in there. Hmm. It's doable. I've had much bigger things in much smaller spaces and figured it out. I know how that sounded, but I'm, I've had bigger palm trees in the car before and been able to get them out of the car. This is just um, a little different because mobility is a little bit more limited, so I have to be really careful here. I might even... Uh, phone a friend see if maybe i think i probably need some help with this but i'm gonna give it a shot on my own first <sighs> i got it it would i, oh, I should have cut that off while it was laying on its i have to use the dolly to move it anyways it's fine yeah actually i was able to just kind of twist it and pull it and slide it out of there yeah. i don't know how many times i have said it but favorite garden Tool, this isn't even a tool. Accessory, not even an accessory. I don't know what you call it. Thing I use most in the garden, three-way cart. Use it as a dolly, you can use it like this, which is really nifty. If you have big plants, these things are amazing. Yeah, between this and this and the gorilla cart. So nifty to have around. Where are my snippers? Here they are. There we go, come in here free the palm tree did a very good job tying this thing up i need new snippers okay let's try my 
cheap rusty outdoor scissors that'll do the trick, I bet. Kind of. <laughs> oh, freedom! I'll just kind of scoot this over here and set it upright and get a better look at it. <sighs> there it is. This is a very nice, high quality queen palm. Very girthy down below. The fronds are coming out at a nice arch. It's not doing that bean pole thing that queen palms tend to do until they reach a certain height. Queen palms tend to do this like bean pole. Well, here, here's a great example. This low quality, crappy, terrible queen palm. See that? It's just a stick. Whereas this one, no, she, she's thick and she's got the arches going on. A little bit of curve to the trunk, which is okay. Nice full canopy. You can see where they've had to do some pruning on it. This is one they've had for a really long time. So it's um, done some growing for them. And uh, I am excited to have this palm tree and to do fun, beautiful things with it. It's just, it's perfect. I got two others that were similar back in March, right before the shutdown. One of them's right here, the other one's behind me. And uh, they're just great high quality queen palms. So eventually, probably next year, these mule palms aren't going to work in these planters anymore. They need to be bumped up into something much larger. And then I'm going to be putting a couple of queen palms down there. The thing is though, I am really like I'm having a queen palm over here. This is the first year I've done that and it looks great. So next year, this queen palm right there, this queen palm and the one behind me, down there, the mule palms will get potted up into larger pots and get placed into the garden. So there you go. So it might seem stupid and crazy. Like, why would you need more palm trees? I don't. It's a guilty pleasure, just like any other hobby. And it was a really excellent price, that trunk. It just, it has a great trunk on it. I can already tell where it's going to start to have some clear lines on it. And this is pretty small to be getting a trunk on it. So. I'm happy with this. I know queen palms aren't the most exciting. I like them because they have a lot of texture and they're hardy. Now, not hardy to zone six, but I can leave them outside much longer than I can these Adenidia palms. Like those have to go in as soon as temperatures start to drop below like 55. I really prefer to move them inside because they're more prone to rot. Plus the daytime temperatures following those lows in the 50s, those daytime temperatures would need to be in like the 80s to make up for those cooler nights just isn't great for them. The queen palms, I don't have to worry about that. I usually leave them out into the 20s. Not for a long time, but I mean, the that one right there and the one behind me, remember when I got those? They had to spend the night on the driveway with a tarp over them. They got covered in snow because I wasn't able to get them into my garage at the time. And uh, yeah, they didn't skip a beat. And then the opposite of that, this queen palm right here got frozen to the ground last winter when we had an unexpected freeze and an ice storm. It almost died. That was at 13 degrees Fahrenheit. That's very cold for a queen palm. And look, it's still alive. It doesn't look great, but it's still alive. That one over there is the same thing, frozen to the ground. But it did manage to rebound and it'll be okay. Truth is, I'm not that crazy about that queen palm or the other one. I'm talking quietly. I don't want them to hear me. They're just ugly and uh, I prefer the ones that are more stout and thick. It was fun. Thanks for joining me while I just did irresponsible things that, but uh, that the irresponsible things that make me very happy. So I have learned that I should mute this. I'm not a very good editor when there's a baseball game on, <laughs> like not at all. Four nights in a row I sit down to edit, but then the baseball game's on and I get nothing done. But that's okay. There's what I have to do, simple stuff. It is late. That's typically when I feel more talkative. And it's also been um like, five days since I got the palm tree. It rained and then I had other things to do that were kind of boring and I had some other videos, you know, just life. So I haven't really been outside much because again, lots of rain. That's clearing up. Looks like the forecast is going to be nice. Maybe a little bit chilly, but still nice. But the reason I thought to pick up the camera is as you may know, if you've been around on this channel for a while, I've had a lot of electrical problems, mostly that area where we were just looking. And I've been wanting to do a nighttime garden tour. <laughs> usually this window there's just a gorgeous view of the palm tree and the gingers just started blooming down there and the bananas get all lit up and um nope 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 no nope. power the power's gone don't know where it went can't find it pitch black there's three outlets one there one like right outside this wall and then another one over here none of them work now last time that happened it was a similar situation it took like a year and a half or two years to figure out it went to that light post and there's an electrical outlet underneath it, another one over there. It turned out that it was just a GFCI need to be replaced. So lesson learned, learned something there. But how do you know 
Like, there's three different GFCIs around here. I haven't stepped all the way out because it's humid and I know my lens is just going to fog up. How, but how, 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 do I just buy three new ones and replace all of them? Keep my fingers crossed and hope that that's what the problem is. Anyone? I know, you can't answer me. I should do live streams at some point. Anyways, that's what's up. Got new drills. Two of them. This one just stopped working. Actually, almost all of my power tools outside stopped working. There must have been some kind of power surge because the batteries on all of them are just shot. Like, it says they're charging. This is the one that goes to this, but it, it just, nothing happens. So I don't know what that's about. Everything's hooked to a GFCI, but so I looked into getting a new battery for this drill. And it was so crazy expensive. For $20 more, I was able to get a kit from DeWalt that came with a new drill, an impact driver, two batteries, a charger, and it came with this fun little bag that I don't need. But I was like, well, I'm not going to, why would I just buy one battery for when for twenty dollars more and just get new just get new drills that just made more sense. I'm excited about those because I have a lot of things that need holes drilled in them, mostly pots, and I haven't been able to do that because somehow all of my drills stopped working. Things are always breaking, which is bull crap because I take pretty good care of my stuff, so it gets really annoying. But it was a good deal as long as they don't break. If they don't last, like if in two to three years either of these are broken, I'm not getting any more DeWalt because this the uh, drill, it's like the third time I've replaced that drill as it is. Also, a new cloche came in the mail. So nice, this peperomia that I've had in here had like severely, severely outgrown the one that it was in. But these bigger ones are so expensive, but uh, what's the name of the company? Creative Co-op. They're a company, I like them a lot and they, they're on Amazon now. And so I was able to get this big bell, I think it was about 28 to 31 maybe somewhere in there and that's with the base and everything so it's like that's a pretty good deal that's you know around what they should cost but these days these bigger ones they seem to cost more but that pepperomi is nice and happy now i would like to find one big enough for this frost pepperomi that i had back here but that would i think that would cost a fortune <laughs> it would need to be like a foot in diameter <laughs> That might be pushing it. I don't know if that's going to happen. You guys ever tried exfoliating mitts? I really like these. It says on here it's for like spray tans. I've always just used them to bathe. Is that... I don't know. I don't know. I haven't spray tanned. But they're very nice because when I had my... What was it? The skin graft? I'm going to find Pumpkin while we talk about this. There she is. So when I had... What, are you feeling camera shy? Pumpkin? Where are you going? Everybody loves you. Come back, Pumpkin. You hyper? All right. She's kind of hyper. Oh, did you hear me talking to someone else? I'm trying to tell a story here. You guys are very distracting. Oh, no. Come back. I'm sorry, Tucker. <laughs> Let's try this again. When I had the skin graft, they shaved my leg. You know, I don't didn't need to point to it. I'm sure you know what a leg is. But then it felt really weird. I mean, they didn't shave my whole leg, just like my thigh, like from like right here and up to like my booty because that's they took all the skin from right in here. Anyways, it felt weird. When I laid in bed at night, it felt like there was like a hairy creature from this leg rubbing against that one. So I just said, screw it. And I went ahead and I shaved them. And not going to lie, I don't hate it. It's, it's, it's quite nice. The sheets feel so soft. <laughs> but that was just supposed to be temporary. But, um... As the hair started to grow back out, it was itchy, so I did it again, and I'm like, am I just, am I stuck like this? It's not something I was, like, trying to commit to. I just didn't like the way it felt having, like, a hairy leg against it. It just, it felt weird, but now I'm trapped, and I, you know, probably just have to suck it up and deal with some itchy, scruffy legs for a few days. Pumpkin, come back. Where are you going? Where are you going, bite? Oh, but anyways, that was the story behind the mitt because the things I was reading about the legs itching said to exfoliate more. So I'm like, okay, you can try that. All oh, this is pretty much pointless. Just thought I'd check back in because it's nice. And like I said, I was feeling talkative and the house is quiet for a change. So, wow, this, I haven't really tried this lens out for nighttime stuff. That's really good. If only I had lighting out here. Very impressive. I don't know how grainy it's going to look when it's on a larger screen, but I can't see those clouds with my naked eyes, but very, very, very apparent with the lens. And it doesn't really pick up the low light as well. Why are the clouds so bright? Like, look at that. But then I come down here and it's, oh, it's because of, I bet it's from the lights from the pool, probably. We'll pick back up tomorrow. Maybe get some plant stuff done. I don't know what, no plans, just hanging out having fun. Ugh, I love these gingers so much. All right, maybe still a little bit more because look who showed up. Hey, Tuck, did you show up to say hi? Yeah, you don't come down that much anymore. You like to sleep upstairs. You need to go outdoors? 
That's what's going on? Okay, let's go outside. There you go. I have to supervise him when he goes out because he has a hot spot on his neck. And <laughs> because of that, he keeps trying to jump in the pool. I think the water probably feels really nice on his neck. So I uh, have to come out with him and escort him. Because if I don't, then he jumps right in that pool and it needs to stay dry. He's been to the vet. He's on some medications and things like that to help it get better. What are you doing? Do you need to go potty or not? Tucker. Tucker, do you need to go potty? Would you do that, please? Please? I have things I need to do. Go to your business. Go on. Go potty. Come on. There you go. Good boy. Go on. That's not, that's not going potty. That's going... Okay, you're thirsty. I just filled up your water bowl in the house, but that's okay. That's what that's there for. Go ahead and get your water. I mentioned I'd show you guys the Vanda when it bloomed. This one. See it? I know it's dark, but it looks very pretty at nighttime, especially when it is in focus and it has another spike coming up on it right over there. Typically, you know, I have my Vandacious orchids on the screens back here, but the sun has shifted and there's just like very, very little light back there. This time of year, I do tend to try and move them forward, especially when they start to bloom. You know, want to be able to see those blooms. Looks nice. Don't want that to be hiding all the way back there where you can't even you don't even know what i'm looking at it's too dark nobody knows what i'm looking at this is actually what spurred me to pick up the camera and start talking and i just never brought it up i just released this video a few hours ago and the comments have been so nice y'all are so fantastic just such a lovely group of people you didn't do your business you didn't tucker go potty did you want to come out here for water? There's two water bowls full of water in the house. Sometimes he will refuse. Yeah, I'm still talking about you. Sometimes he'll refuse to go to the grass and go and then go in the house and poop on the floor. That's a new thing that started within the last year. He's getting older and realizing that he can just kind of get away with things. I'm not happy about that, but he's kind of right. I feel terrible scolding him at this point in his life but yeah that's another reason i like to come out here with him because it helps motivate him to actually go to the grass and go you want to go inside come on come on you can do it there you go good boy tuck all right we'll pick up in the morning maybe some plant things will happen who knows oh and all this that's still if you knew here that's like first aid stuff and nail polish remover i know it looks like a mess but is what it is. Oh, looks like the sun's going to be out today. It's been so long. It's been so cloudy. Hey, pumpkin. What you looking at? There's nothing over there. Hey, butt. Get your breakfast cookies. You gonna leave? Okay. I wonder if it's the new lens. Because she used to show off for the camera. She kind of just runs away from it. I don't know what that's about. We're gonna have to start doing some positive association work. Cookies and camera time. Toby. It's a beautiful day. Let's go outdoors. <laughs> There you go, I'll be there in just a second. Good boy, Toby. Sure, he's like, um, excuse me, you're gonna pressure me to go outside and you're not gonna come with me? Yeah, here I am, I came, I told you I would. And time to wait for the lens to defog, it's starting to fog over. Anyone else ever tend to get like really chatty and just sort of all over the place when you're maybe procrastinating a little bit? Yeah, it's time. I can go ahead and clean up my potting area. You know, I had all this stuff piled over here because it's where the wheelbarrow was and it's near the fans and near the chairs and I, it's it's a horrible eyesore and I hate it, but it was just necessary to get things done because I had to sit to do a lot of the things I was doing this year and I had to be near the fans and near the shade. But I think it's safe at this point to say that one, I don't have a ton of repotting left to do. There's still some. I still have some to do, but um, not like the massive amounts that I was doing in the spring and throughout the summer. So I can go ahead and finally get this cleaned up. I tend to hold on to a lot of my larger plastic pots. So I'll get those organized. I'll grab some totes for things that don't need to stay back here. Have some broken pottery down there that just got glued back together. Plenty of stuff to go into the recycling bin and just, it's not going to be perfect because that table's full of plants but usually a lot of those little plants end up on the tiki bar talked about that a week or two ago that tiki bar has lost its structural integrity so they're going to stay underneath the umbrella for the rest of the year which is only like another six weeks so it's not that big of a deal but this i'm tired of looking at this and at my follow-up i had a follow-up for my skin graft monday this week and the doctor said that 
he's not sure, but they might want to go in and do one more surgery because there's a, like just a small spot in the graft. That, I mean, it's a spot like maybe this big where there's like this lump that's growing and it's a common thing. I don't remember what it's called, like a granulocytis, something like that. That's what he says it is. And the skin doesn't quite want to go over it. So they might go and cut that out and do another graft on top of that. And that would be in like, I don't know, two and a half to three weeks. And if they do that, then I get to return to being the human blob for another month, just like with the last one where I can't do anything and just have to sit very still because shoulder skin, you know, it moves a lot. So have to, you know, be still so that that skin can grow back together. So one, this needs to be done anyways. Two, I'm able to do it now, so may as well do it. And uh, three, in a couple weeks, I might be out of the game again for another four to six weeks having to heal again, which would be really bad timing because, um, yeah, I have a lot of plants that are going to need to be moved back into the grow space, into the garage, I'm possibly mid-October, hopefully. It used to be the week of Thanksgiving, usually. It used to be when I moved the plants in. That hasn't been the case the last few years. They've been in by November 1st because the things are just changing. Things are a lot more cold. And we have a night coming up here next week where they're saying it's going to be like 48 degrees in September. That is nuts. So I'm a little bit nervous about things being extra cold this year and maybe having a very early fall. So I just, you know, want to make sure to get on top of the things that I have wanted to do but couldn't do, which would be this. Not very exciting, but it'll be nice to have that chunk of the patio back because this has been an eyesore. And I think I'm going to move like my potting area which is my potting stuff is mostly that cooler and then the wheelbarrow i'll probably go ahead and put them back by the tiki bar because that's a shady spot it's closer to the edge of the patio which will make more sense because i can hose things down and off the patio should they you know i make a mess should i ma i'll make a mess it's just part of potting things sometimes so that's what i'm going to do i don't really know how to vlog it because it's just pots and throwing stuff in the recycling bin. But, I don't know, maybe we'll do it before and after. Maybe I'll find stuff we can talk about it while I'm doing it. I don't know, I guess we'll find out together. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just look at this though. It's just an eyesore, I'm tired of it. I'm ready to get that all cleaned up and, like I said, it's not gonna be perfect, but it will be better. It'll just be nice to have the patio opened again. Yeah, that looks lovely. You know, with the queen palm behind it, everything looks pretty. Yeah, no, not so much. So this is like, I don't know, three minutes worth of work. It really, I know it looked like a bunch of garbage. It was mostly pottery that just needed to be organized. What's weird though, I thought I'd go ahead and show you this because it let you guys get into the mystery with me. I don't, why is there, that's insulation. Why is there insulation in this pot? From an attic or so, I, what's that doing in here? I have no idea. Why would there be insulation in this pot? I don't even know what was in here. I have no clue, but why it's their insulation. It wasn't that proven winners thing. This is just, sometimes when I get things and I pop them up, I'll have like a plant, a pot that I'll use as a garbage can and then dump it. So that's like, I don't, I don't know. But like I said, mostly just been organizing pottery and deciding what I need to keep and what I do not. Keeping a lot of it, just, you know, only things that are still have like a decent structural integrity. I'll get these cleaned up later, get them all hosed out and spread them out and let them dry but for now that's that is much better obviously not done though but much better also there's been like a ruckus over here so i think there's a critter i don't know where it is and i don't know what it is but i hope it doesn't find me being a good helper toby yeah not so much you just keep standing right in front of me look at so that's it's still messy over there but a vast improvement by far i've done a lot of scrubbing and scooping and washing i haven't gotten over here yet because i have things in the way of getting the hose around to get the right angle but getting there i have all this stuff loaded up over here onto the dolly it's just old soil some old mulch just things i'm going to go ahead and spread around the garden stuff that i don't want to use in pots still good though just not like it's it just it started to clump so don't want that for using for repotting that wouldn't make any sense pile of pots here that are dried off and over here i have the larger pots that are drying off right now that's probably going to take a while i hose them down and now they're they've got a lot of moisture in them so i'll probably have to hold off on doing anything with those until tomorrow or maybe this evening pretty much all that's left is just finding places for everything shouldn't be too hard to do like i said 
still a mess, but work in progress. It's a vast improvement. Not bad for like, what? I don't know. Maybe I've spent 25 minutes so far, maybe half an hour, but a lot of that was just hosing dirt out of the cracks, getting things clean. I don't know why I bothered when there's still this that I couldn't get to because I need to move these. You get it. I'm going to move those things. I feel like that's enough cleanup time. I'm not done, but for the vlog, that's enough of that. We'll move on to something else later. Push it. Come on. What's going on there? Are you going to go down? Okay, that's better. Look how big those banana cannons are getting. Did you want to focus? There we go. You can see they're starting to flower, which means that they're pretty much as tall as they're going to get this year. That's a little bit disappointing. I was hoping they would get bigger, but that's okay. Next year, they will. Like, I think I mentioned in the garden tour that I didn't even get those in the ground until uh, like the second week of July, probably. I didn't even get them in the ground. Somebody else planted them for me, but you know, I put them in pots back in, I want to say it was May, something like that. Yeah, I figured since I have all that stuff sitting out to dry, I may as well go ahead and get my errands run. It's been a week since I went to the nursery to get that queen palm. So I started filming that vlog early. I've been trying to only leave the house like once a week at the most, but I ran out of these protein shakes that I'm supposed to be drinking for the peeling from the skin graft. Well, almost ran out, I have a few left. And then uh, I need to get, what is it? Three GFCIs to try and fix the, ele fix the electrical. And um, I broke a toilet seat this morning because I stood on top of the toilet to uh, attempt to fix an exhaust fan. Use quotations when I say fix the exhaust fan because I just stood on top of the toilet and like punched it a few times. It was making a weird rattling noise and it worked. It fixed the problem, but the toilet seat, the little clippy things broke. I think they may have already been broken. Which way do I want to go? I'm going to take the scenic route today. Sometimes what helps me make up my mind is to which direction to go. This road, very pretty drive, but it only has a 30 mile per hour speed limit, which is pretty hard for me to pull off. It's a big car. It wants to go faster than that. And if I'm the first person in the stoplight, I don't, it's too much pressure having all these people behind me. But if I get to be in the back of the line where other people are going slow, much easier. And it's much more of a relaxed drive. Although they're going a little bit fast. I'm not going that fast. I'm not about to get a ticket. I don't think so. I don't have time to mess with that sort of thing. And my license is expired. But I talked to the people at the DMV and they said that I have six months and that there's a little bit of wiggle room this year because I haven't. The DMVs here aren't really following the protocols for safety. They're not like limiting the number of people who come in or any of those things. And um, you know, if I have to have more surgeries, I don't want to get COVID period, but especially right now, I have a big freaking hole on my back. I need to make sure that that can get fixed. So I'm like, I'm not about to go stand in your little crowded glass room and get sick. I don't think so, just for my driver's license. I'm not doing that. I feel like there's something else really important that I need from Lowe's and I can't remember what it is. What did I say? I need GFCIs and um, was there anything else? There definitely was. I need the GFCIs. Crap. Oh, <laughs> the toilet seat. There's got to be something. I know there is something. I don't know. This is why I should write things down. Uh, I wasn't planning on filming in Sam's. I'm going to be in and out very quickly, but I just, oh, come on. I don't know. I don't know, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm not ready for that. Oh, that's a really good deal on fairy lights, though, on the little wire string lights. All of those for $11.98, but they only come in cool white, warm white, and well, where's the warm white? I would be into that because that's a very good deal. Where's the, do they have that? Sitting directly in front of me. Now, do these turn off on their own? Yes, timer, six hours on off. That, that is very important. That's a pretty good deal. Now, I know that this is technically Christmas and from the Christmas thing, but I got this so I can put them in like lanterns and craft type things, not for Christmas. I mean, it'd be fine if that's what it was for, but that's just a good deal. Well, here we are. Ah, I feel like there's not really that much to even look at. It's, you know, asters, coneflowers, just the bees are very much enjoying. You look at him with a pollen up there on his foot. All right, I'm sorry, I got too close. Leave you alone. You do your thing, bee. Oh, they have some hypericums back there. Those get one well, there to have them. See those cute little berries? Those are fun plants. Yeah, it's mostly mums. A little bit of coleus, some 
the Celosia doesn't have much going on for it, but it's there and it's pretty. Why am I here? Oh yeah, GFCIs. Jeez, those are some big Alberta spruces. I have no need for them. I just said they're big. End of story. Hope that was entertaining. Of course, I get here when they're just getting the plants in. They need to be unpackaged. That's happened like the last three times I've been to Lowe's. So it's like I don't, I just, I get to see boxes. But it's not that hard to tell. I see what looks like yucca canes, majesty palms, bird of paradise, and then no idea what's in the boxes. That I don't really care. I don't need any more plants. Not seeing GFCIs. I can find the kits, but that's all I'm seeing so far. This is I'm not even in the right area. Oh, is your Amazon fire lonely? Because Lowe's has got companions for it. Okay, so Halloween, I'm okay with that. It's, people need something to look forward to. Collapsible Jacqueline. Oh my gosh, could we use this as a planter? What do they have in there? Oh, it's to give away treats. Huh. Could I plant it up with kale and cabbage? That would be more fun. Yeah, Halloween's exciting. I'm not, I'm not ready yet though. I'm still in summer mode. So there's still so many summer things left to do. Oh, but I found my electrical things and they have Lysol. Very rare find. And plants. It's really, I don't know. It's not that much to see here, which is okay. You know, I mean, they're going to start doing the whole thing with clearancing stuff out here fairly soon. Or not clearancing them out, but halting the orders so that they can set up all the way back there for Christmas. Excuse me, where are you going? I have a crepe myrtle in here that I thought would be good for bonsai, but I think I changed my mind on that one. Probably gonna put that back. Ah, this, they've been out of this stuff for a long time. It's my favorite orchid mix because it's just the bark, the charcoal, and some big chunky peat. Mixes in really well with other blends for potting soil. Oh, and what is this, Dracaena? Look at this. It doesn't say, it just says Dracaena, Dracaena. But look what it, what? How neat! What neat foliage! The black anthuriums, these are kind of cool. It's a neat chocolatey color. I don't, like, I don't personally want it, but I think they're neat. I appreciate them. <laughs> How long ago was it that I was like, I don't need any more plants? It's different. I'm going to be using these. I meant like shrubbery type things. I have some fall planters I want to do and I needed a few colorful fillers. Now the lights are back on. Thought I had fixed that, but apparently not. Cool. It was in the shop for like a week and a half. They did things and said they knew what the problem was. Costs a lot of money, like a lot of money. I'm a little ticked off right now, but hey, it is what it is. We'll give them a call when I get home. This might be really blurry. I don't know. I don't look at the camera when I'm driving. I sprayed this down with sanitizer when I got in the car. It didn't really do a very thorough job of wiping it off, so. I should probably stop talking. Oh, isn't this a pretty road? I love driving this back road so go behind everything up and down the hills and the trees. It's so nice. Looks very pretty in the fall when we actually have fall. Some years it just kind of gets cold and then just miss it. Comes out of nowhere. Okay, I went, I stopped. I'm, there's, I forgot that this nursery is off this road, so I thought I'd just stop in real quick and just try to look at. This is why I don't mess with the kale and cabbage all that often until like actually into closer to October because it's still too warm. Look at them. I mean, they look dumb. They're bolting because it gets it gets too hot. Even though it's been rather cool, we still have plenty of days in the upper 80s and lower 90s. Even though I like them, I always have to wait to plant them. And then by the time it's actually time to plant them around here, nobody has them. Oh, look at how pretty this Capressa is. It's sold. So that's good. I can't even get it. You don't see these around here very often. They have that fun, airy texture and the beautiful blue foliage. So pretty. Look at the size of these hydrangea trees. These things are monsters. What are these? Phantom hydrangea tree. These things are beasts. Oh. Oh. I mean, I guess considering how big they are, that's okay. You know, I've got all mine. Like, super, super cheap at Lowe's. They're like 70 bucks and they're huge, but they're also a different variety. I'm also, this nursery, very, very expensive. Oh, but did I mention that the tropicals are 50% off? So, um, I don't know. I'm just, just taking it for a walk. We'll see how we get along. I'm going to try and make a mental note here, or not even, it's in the video, that they have these clumping bamboos here. These are Fergusia, um, Scabrias, I think is what the tag said. Yeah, Scabrita. No price. 
not on any of them and they don't look that great either but the clumpers can be a little bit harder to come by and i'm thinking the two hydrangea trees that i have in my backyard that are like on each side of the stairs that go up my wall they're not getting enough sun anymore the trees have just gotten so big and i may move those to my front yard plant them in the ground and maybe do clumping bamboos in those planters i think that'd be really pretty and like i said they're hard to come by so i'm gonna try and get a price on these and figure that out that'll probably be a thing for next year but it's just making a mental they're nice nice looking plants i'm also into these wisterias these are nice look how much girth it has on it the thing is this is something i would wait to see if it goes on clearance later in the year because i would want to bonsai this which would mean buying this entire thing and then <laughs> cutting it so it's not not something i'd want to spend much money on okay Totally different from the clumping bamboo, but look at look at how pretty. Look at the kings on there. It's in Aurel Socata. See so the Aurel Socata? These are nice and big, too. So not into the price. That's about what they usually cost when they're this big. But that, oh, those are so pretty. I love those. Wouldn't those be beautiful in a couple of planters framing? And as they get bigger, they'll create kind of like an archway. Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be thinking about these. Look at the cute little... Robolini. It's got a nice trunk on it. They have a ton of tropicals. Like, tons. And they're all 50% off. I can't... The thing is, the original prices on a lot of them, very high. Not on every... Wait, this is only $38. It was $128, now $30. That's, um... Yeah. <laughs> wow, that's a... That is a very good price. I don't really have any desire for this plant, but that's a very good price. If you into the ZZ plants, that that's... Wow. 38 bucks that is still it's very tempting like i said i don't i don't even want it so it doesn't make i kind of want it now though hmm there's like a triple drunk at a nidia palm back there for 30 bucks and they have a couple windmill palms but they're just pathetically small for the size of their pots that would be tempting if they had like a foot more of trunk on them but they don't everything else it's majesty palms triangle palms some marika palms and bamboo palms and then the this the bismarck yet that's a very i got that's a really good price this is also that's ugh. no don't want it don't need it this is 70 percent off it's like a 70 dollar plant don't need it and that's not all but what's the edit it is eh. i love them look at that alokasia isn't that beautiful how did i it's like i forgot how to say alokasia ugh. anyways yeah the edit i love them but I think I'm becoming more of an Alexander fan. Edinidias are just such a pain to keep inside unless you have a really bright room and some warmth for them. Alexanders are a little bit more laid back. See? Look at that. It's beautiful. I was so well behaved in there. As I was in there, they were going around and marking all the tropicals down that were already 50% off. They were marking them down to 70. 70% off. Ugh. But I have kind of come to a place with a lot of my plants where I'm like, if I don't love it and it isn't something that I've wanted for a really, really long time, then I, I don't need it. I, it's like There's only space for so many things. But when you see the good deal, it can become tempting. Like with that Zamia that was in there. Like, oh, that was tempting. That thing was big. I don't know if it showed on camera, but it was at least three, maybe four feet wide and about probably 30 inches to maybe three feet tall probably not quite that tall fantastic deal but then i was like okay but am i do i like this enough to have to take care of it all winter and the answer to that is hell no i do not so i didn't get it they did have some lady palms though I was tempted with those but no i got the bismarckia that's enough and those windmill palms i saw the original price on them was like 280 bucks or something like that which is just nuts however i am assuming that they probably thought that the windmill palms were going to come in much bigger when ordering 15 gallon plants i mean that was those were severely over potted and that's been becoming a thing with palm growers and it really kind of gets on my nerves they'll really really over pot them and uh, that way you know because a palm tree can sit in the same pot for many years but it's just like a 15 gallon windmill palm should be much 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 bigger <laughs> than like 
24 inches tall with a tiny skinny scrawny little trunk they redid this whole thing i'm gonna have to go through here sorry bud would have been nice they just finished that new roundabout there and hadn't put up the new signs yet for what lane to be in to get back onto the little mini highway here so yeah i don't windmill palms that size 45 bucks so even the clearance price i was like nope but i'm sure they they probably paid a lot for them I would have been ticked if I had ordered 15 gallon windmill palms and those dinky little things are what showed up. Oh, look at it. I love it. Is it dark? Why is my exposure so low? It's so cute. All the Bismarck yet and the ginger. Remember from the garden tour? And I was like, oh, I'm going to love when that starts to come over the path. That looks so nice with the blue grass underneath it. The path is a little narrow right now because I have all the things for other videos and fall planters on the path that are going to go up. It's a whole thing. You get it. There's always stuff going on here. But look at how just adorable. Excellent palm trees. I'm really excited about this one. I had one of these, I don't know, 15 years ago, and it just, it got too big. These get very wide. Now, back then, I didn't have the garage converted into a grow space, and that's been my only hesitation with getting another one of these, is that I'm like, okay, this is going to take up a lot of space. But I've wanted a new one long enough that I was like, you know what, I'm going to get it, especially for the price. This thing was dirt cheap. They wanted $240 for it. I paid about $200 less than that because of the discounts. Fantastic deal. And that's pretty steep for a 17-inch Bismarckia. When things, the further north you go, the more they're going to cost because of shipping and everything. But still, like I mentioned, that's a very, the nursery I was at tends to be kind of on the more pricey end, the bit more expensive, that's why I don't go there as often. But for the price, I was like, um, okay. Exercise a lot of restraint with the other things though. You know, with like the added Nydia palms, like I mentioned, it's, they're a pain in the house in the winter time. And uh, it's just, I have to consider space. So, you know, I have the new Queens, which is awesome. I have those that I'll be able to work with next year. Same thing with this Bismarckia. Not necessarily the best of like the houseplant palms, but they're also not the hardest to grow. The main thing with the Bismarckias is really about the potting. This one might be planted a little bit deep, so I might pull out some of its potting soil. I don't know, I have to wait and see on that. With my grow space and the temperatures and everything, it should be fine. The main thing's going to be keeping the crown dry. I'm not going to want water to be able to get in there or settle. And that's a general rule of thumb with all palm trees, really. You want to keep the crown dry. And these can be pretty drought tolerant. They're going to grow their best with a good amount of light and good well-drained soil with plenty of water or frequent watering, I should say. But they don't have to have that. So during the winter time, uh, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to keep this in more of the cool dormant fashion or if I'm going to let it stay on the hot end of things with lots of light and lots of water to try and keep it growing actively. I'll probably go somewhere in the middle with it because I don't want it to stretch too much. The Bismarckias, especially when they're smaller, they can go into uh, like medium light. They prefer bright light, but you can grow them in some shade especially if you actually have them outdoors but you're going to have much longer more extended growth on it and it's not going to have that like short stout chonk appearance to it that makes them so cute i shouldn't really say short these get very big these are massive palm trees and uh, under the right conditions can grow fairly quickly too these for a palm tree that is that's why i always get thrown off by the pricing on them a little bit i think it's just a status thing maybe that's why i haven't gotten a new one because the price on them's come up so much over the years this is one like i had mentioned that those windmill palms that i thought those were severely overpotted. this is about right this bismarckias the main thing with them is just it's repotting that's where things get really risky repotting and planting they don't like having their roots disturbed. So I'm going to leave it in this black nursery can until next spring. And then I'll go ahead and repot it. And it will probably remain in whatever I potted into for, I'd say, at least two to two and a half years, depending on the growth rate. Because every time you repot them, that's when you run more of a risk of losing the plants, especially if you're moving them into the ground, whether that's in the ground or into a new pot. It's just, you got to do it very carefully. They don't like their roots messed with. But yeah, beautiful palm tree. Great palm trees, beautiful foliage, not too hard to grow. They're even pretty cold tolerant for short spells at least, as long as things aren't wet. Like I wouldn't want this to have any kind of precipitation on it. 
if it were below, I don't know, 40 just to be safe to not have any setbacks. But there are plenty of people who claim these going into the teens without problems. I won't be testing that theory. Definitely not going to, but there are plenty of people on like the palm boards and the hardy palm boards who are in like zone 8b who are growing them and that they, they say they're doing great i'm in zone 6b i won't be testing its hardiness that's for sure i'll probably treat it about like i will my queens maybe not as much this year but further down the road when it's had a little bit of time to experience cooler temperatures you know fresh up from florida that can be kind of shocking to them but my queens i'll usually leave them out Okay, I probably won't treat this like my queens, because I'll leave my queens out into the upper 20s, not for a long time, but if it's going to be short and then warm back up, I'll let them take some cold, and they've always been okay with it. I mean, last year, some, the, you know, a couple of them got frozen to the ground, and it dropped down to 13 degrees, but it's it. They recovered. Fungicide and fertilizer they came back but that's not normal and that was too cold i don't want this to have any setbacks there's just so much you can do with these i've seen the bismarckias planted in so many different ways in various containers and they always just look beautiful there's just something about the form that they have with their growth and the boots and the beautiful blue foliage and those big fan fronds and just they're a statement palm tree. It's one of the things I love about them. I'm probably going to pot this up into something in more of a sandstone color next year with some, maybe some ivy geraniums coming over the side. That was an unexpected surprise. I just popped by that nursery because I was passing it and it's not an area I'm in very often, even though it's not that far from my house. It's just kind of a pain to get to. And um, I, one, wanted to find some cabbage and kale that looks nice. That didn't go well and then i was also hoping to find some ball mums the mums from ball seed company they have the most beautiful mums but i can't find them anywhere so far this year so might just be a mum free fall which is fine whatever but i got my eyes peeled for them and they just happened to be there the tropicals were 50 percent off when i got there and while i was there i may have already said this there was somebody around marking them down another 20 percent. they were 70 percent off and i only got one thing i'm i'm patting myself on the back here like that's a big that's very good of me i just didn't need you know i have there's more than enough tropical plants out here now that i've got things cleaned up i mean it's not spotless but certainly an improvement would look better if this chair wasn't here good enough for right now i sort of got to a place where i was like there's so many planters i want to do but i just kind of felt like i needed to clean first you know it was like i'm not gonna really enjoy myself until that's done this isn't perfect but it's done enough so now that i've cleaned up I'm more motivated to go ahead and get into doing some planters and some arrangements for fall. Be doing that next week. I used to do like fall planter videos. I don't know if I'm going to do that this year. That'll at least be in the vlogs. Uh, you guys let me know if you would, if that's something you would want dedicated, like as their own videos or something, just like sit down and plant some stuff and talk about them. Just because with the fall planters, there's only so much variety at the nurseries around here. And the, I just feel like it would get redundant if I, because I basically do, we'll be doing the same thing every year. Cabbage, kale, zinnias, grass, and I can't even find any trailers. Nobody even has any trailers, so I won't be even using those this year. But I'm going to do a few of them just because I couldn't really do much with the summer arrangements. Look at what I'm saying as I'm like looking around my garden and there's flowers absolutely everywhere. <laughs> it's still, it's not as much as I usually do. Yeah, you guys let me know whether you think that'd be more fun as a vlog or their own little videos. I think I'd prefer to like the bulk of them, at least my barrel planters, uh, to just do them in a vlog. and walk around, pick out the plants together and have some fun that way. Just keep it light and informal. I, that's probably what i'll do but let me know because i would understand if people want to see some fall videos but not want to watch them in a vlog the vlogs are all over the place because i film just like random things that are going on every day almost every day so very rarely does a vlog have like a cohesiveness to it these are the hydrangea trees i was talking about that i was saying i might replace these with bamboo bamboo i don't know why i said that like a question because i just i need to do something different on each side of the stairs here this looks messy and uh, the growth out of them just it's not the same as it used to be because there just isn't as much sun over here that could be changing though my neighbors up here, they had a big birch tree cut down a few days ago. It was up against their deck, and they're thinking about cutting out a lot of the stuff that's along the fence here. 
which would allow more light back here. It would kill the privacy. And they were so kind. They said, would you mind if we did that? And I'm, you know, it's your yard. You do you. But what I didn't say was go ahead. But I may go ahead and plant a whole bunch of stuff up here because I don't, I like my privacy. So maybe I'll wait and see what they end up doing there because that'll let in more light and then maybe they'll be happier. The panicle hydrangeas, they like a decent amount of sun. I have some bare spots in my front yard where I think that these would be perfectly happy. Perennials, you know, you can only keep them in pots for so long. That's why I moved this one into a larger pot because it just, they need really big pots. And the strawberry vanilla hydrangeas, I love them. The flowers are huge, but they are so big and heavy that they sort of hang down. And that's why I kind of like the limelight a little bit better as far as standardized hydrangeas go because they'll hold their foliage more upright without that weeping habit. The weeping habit on here only looks good if the plant's very full and they're just not getting as full over here as I would like anymore because the sun is just not really there anymore. They're doing okay. They're still beautiful plants but they might do better with a few more hours of sun. And like I said, I have some bare spots in my front yard and there are a few bamboos. I don't know about the yellow bamboo like I showed at the nursery. I think a, the, a clumping variety would probably do better with the amount of light that's over here. That's another thing I have to think about because I do think that a couple of just tall bamboos and some nice pots on each side of the staircase would look stunning. Yeah, I know. There's still the dead one from last year. I'm gonna have someone come over here and help me with that. I can't, that's too, that's way too heavy. Like, I've stepped up my activity, but with heavy things, still trying to be very careful. Like, I can do things, like, for a longer period of time, but when it comes to things that are heavy, I'm still trying to be very careful. So maybe in the meantime, I wonder if I could, that's been dead for a year. I might be able to use my whoppers and just, huh. <laughs> um, nope. Not so much. I have a newer pair. These are, I, I don't know. I've had these loppers forever. So it's maybe just the, the, the blades too dull, but it's, that's, a, it's pretty stuck in there. So now that's what that looks like. Oops. I think that looks nice like that, that it's art. Yeah, I did that on purpose. That's what I'll go with. So that's what's going on here. Taking it easy, getting some things done. Things are much more clean over here. Still lots of organizing to do. Not gonna bore you guys with that stuff though. It'd be boring, so I'll do that on my own time. <laughs> Not that I doubt any of this has been exhilarating. It's a vlog, you know. Yeah, it's how vlogs go. This is just the way things were this week. But I hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's just going beautifully for you. All my social media is down below. I use Instagram more than anything else. And if you like the video, you give it a thumbs up. It makes a big difference with videos and for the channel. I appreciate it and subscribe as well and hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. Oh, last thing. One last thing. Remember last week when I was rearranging this? You don't know where I am. Last week when I was rearranging this whole area over here by the hot tub, and I said I was going to move the ginger because I didn't think it was getting enough light and it wasn't going to bloom. Look at that. A little over a week later, like 10 days later, getting little, little buds out of here. So that is exciting. I thought it probably just needed a little bit more sunlight. All right, I'm actually going to shut up now. Hope everybody's doing well. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.